Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here today. I'm going to, I'm going to, in just a second, we're going to turn everything on to me. So let's uh, let's start just by give a little introduction here. My name is Bill Moore. I'm uh, the founder and chief nerd at a company called Real World Systems in Panama. We are a, a technology-based trading company. My background is math and physics. So I've been in technology basically my whole life, and uh, I have a uh, bachelor's in, in math and a master's degree in physics. So that's what... Uh, that's what got me into the uh, technology world a long time ago, a uh, long time ago, maybe 1978, when I got out of, got out of graduate school. We've been, I've been purely in technology since then. In 2004, I started this company here, which was aimed uh, completely at the financial sector. And uh, my background in math and physics, of course, came in quite handy. We built, we have built applications, primarily uh, initially for market making. We built uh, uh, a full suite of tools for options market makers, which is our flagship software. And then a couple of years ago, we began to get into tools uh, a little bit more broad-based, and, and hence the relationship with Bloomberg uh, down the road here. Okay, so today we're going to have a few learning objectives. Uh, get a basic understanding of Japanese candlesticks. We're going to try to understand how candlesticks can work together with other technical indicators. And we're going to try to learn to recognize a few particular candlestick setups. And then we're going to look at trades, uh, example, examples of trades based on those concepts. We are going to go to the actual tool algo hedge that's running on Bloomberg. A main point that we're going to try to do when we talk about the specific candlestick setup, we are going to try to look for some relationships in common because, because quite frankly, even though there's a lot of different names for setups and it all sounds very complicated, I think once you see the general concepts of a few of them anyway, you should be able to master eight or ten of them quite frankly today. Okay, so that's that's going to be the goal today. So first of all, let's let's try to understand what Japanese candlesticks are and what they are not. Uh, there's a whole category of things for trading called technical analysis. There are many, many other types of ways that people trade, and quite frankly, in this day and age, you should try to put more than one advantage, you know, in, in a pile together. I don't think trading one thing is, is uh, the right idea anyway. But Japanese candlesticks certainly fall into a category called technical analysis. Um, the, the Japanese candlestick help with the timing of opening and closing trades. They don't give you prices. They don't give you exit points. They don't, they don't, in other words, they don't give you a, a plan. Okay, you have to, you have, they have to fit in as part of a bigger strategy. So you have to create your trade. Japanese candlesticks can be part of that. It's not by any means, uh, an end all, an end all by itself. They're a setup. Basically, candlestick patterns are a setup. So what other kinds of edges should you be, you, you should be there? Fundamental expertise that certainly helps if you are uh, an expert in, you know, energy or financial uh, financial companies or whatever, discrete events, you know, uh, announcements, earnings, et cetera, et cetera. Market making techniques. Market making techniques are, uh, quite frankly, almost every algorithmic trade these days uh, requires some expertise at getting into and out of the the, uh, the trades. And market makers are are the, are the best at getting into a trade with that. They, they don't they they provide liquidity, in other words, in terms of, as opposed to uh, taking. Uh, pairs trading, personal favorite of mine. As a matter of fact, I, I, we have a, another application submitted to Bloomberg, uh, dedicated solely to pairs trading. But again, the candlesticks can help with, with, uh, deciding exits and, uh, entry points for, for pairs trading. Uh, delta hedging, that's just a, a catch-all phrase for any, uh, phrase for any type of statistical arbitrage opportunities. Uh, I noticed one, at least one of you guys marked down that your primary trade are options. Uh, that's also the world we come from, and so we use the word delta quite a lot. But any type of, uh, any type of market neutral type trading can be done with, uh, in terms of delta hedging. And we're a big believer in making sure your networks are good and, and fast. So, uh, these, these are a few examples of the kinds of other edges that you should be adding into your, your Japanese candlestick. One, this is just an example of some real stuff here. This is actually a trade that we do in Chicago. Uh, the calendar spread. In this case, uh, it's futures calendars as opposed to this option. With this particular, with, with the calendar spread, as probably most of you know, you're trading one expiration against the same underlying future in another expiration. You're watching those things. So, so basically, you use market profile, which is part of uh, the algo head tool, uh, to identify a statistically profitable trade. We're watching, we track and watch for when the spread, the difference between those two months, gets to uh, a first or second standard deviation. Uh, we use market making techniques. We we very rarely just uh, just take unless it's a really extreme case. Uh, we're, we're typically putting our, our prices out there and waiting for the market to come to us to try to get a little edge coming into it. Then we use Japanese candlesticks for the precise timing. So when we're when exactly when we're looking to get in and out, we're using the candlestick. And of course, you know, some type of direct market access is uh, is also as I, as I mentioned quite important. That's just an example of of the kinds of edges you should collect when you're trying to trade um, in general. Okay, so. 
very basic concept of candlesticks. Candlesticks, everybody these days is pretty familiar, but let's, let's just touch on it anyway. There's four pieces of information in a, in, a, in a candlestick. There's the open, the close, the high, and the low. Okay. The first candlestick pictures the, uh, it, it would be a white candlestick if it was bullish, and it would be a black candlestick if it was bearish. Nowadays, with color everything, we have green and red, which, you know, is a little bit more intuitive. So, so basically, though, as I said, everybody's pretty familiar with those things. So, so basically, the body is the part from the open to the close. We call these parts the shadows. Some people call them the wicks, which, which include the, the highs and the lows. Um, very, very clear way to see those four pieces of information. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a number of different candlestick patterns today. This graphic breaks things down into what, what are called single session and two session. Let's, re, let's remember one thing. The, the original candlestick concepts were done based on daily numbers, and they still are wonderful for daily, daily trading. And as you know, the difference between a, a close and an open can be quite a lot uh, on a daily session. But since we use the same types of concepts for, for shorter time frames, one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, etc., um, the open and the close are very often right on top of each other. So there's, there's a couple little differences when they're showing pictures here where the, where the opens and the closes of the consecutive bars uh, are, are quite a bit apart. So that typically would happen in a in daily session. So on things with the single session, we're going to touch on a number of these. We're going to touch on the doji, the hammer, and the shooting star. We're going to touch on all of these during this session here. So single session means that, that a pattern occurs, it's one candlestick all by itself. It doesn't have to have anything else next to it to have the support to be that pattern. If it's a doji, it looks like one of these things here, okay? If it's a hammer, it looks like that, period, okay? An inverted hammer looks like this. If you see that pattern, it is called that. Now, I'm going to show the, the next, let's go, let's go jump up the next slide. I want you to see one thing here. This is just a search that I did. All I did was go put doji into Google. First of all, I got probably thousands of hits. I just kept this page out because it, it illustrates what I said, uh, or what I was looking to see. In all of the early books about candlesticks, when they talk about dojis, they always say, pay attention, okay? So if you take a look here, this is a clip right out of Google. Every place that said doji, it says, pay attention. I think that the doji itself actually very much in the spirit of, of Japanese candlesticks, okay? Because the idea, the idea of most of these patterns is not to trade them, it's to pay attention to them. It's telling you that something is happening. It doesn't mean to trade. It's a setup. It means you should put your eyeballs on it. There are a number of other things that have to go along with these patterns in order to decide whether you're going to trade. Even as a setup, okay, independent of your strategy, there are a number, number of other things for successful Japanese candlestick trading, and we're going to touch on those. So the first one, let's, let's look at the doji. Here we have a trend, right? There's a trend upward, and here we have a doji. So what does that mean? It means indecision. By itself, it means the session opened and closed basically at the same place. It moved up, it moved down, but it started, it ended up right where it began. So we can say clearly that that means indecision, you know, vulnerability, all, all those types of things are the definition. But if this indecision and vulnerability and uncertainty are associated with a trend, then it can be considered something that can lead to a reversal. Okay? So one of the themes here is going to be, uh, there's a candlestick pattern, but was there a trend? You need to be able to put your eyeballs on it and say, yes, there's a trend up. Now the doji comes. Does that mean it's going to be down? We're going to be looking at some of those in a minute. But so the doji by itself says pay attention. It doesn't say trade. One of the first things you're going to watch for in all of the candlestick patterns is, was there a trend leading up to the pattern? Okay? So a doji is one of the most important patterns, probably to some extent because everybody watches it. Everybody in every industry and every type of product uh, asset class watches for doji. Okay, so we're going to move on to a couple of other patterns here, and, and we're going to start with some of the two-session patterns because I, I would like to illustrate a theme as we go along here today. The first pattern we're going to look at is, is an engulfing pattern, okay? The engulfing pattern is uh, one of the strongest patterns, and it's a two-bar two pattern. Uh, it happens when you have one reasonably sized, the body of a bar is it moving with a trend, so this is an uptrend, and you have this bar here, which is a pretty strong bar, and then beside it, you have a bar that totally encompasses the bar depth, the, the, the previous bar. So this is a, this is called an engulfing pattern. There's, this is the bearish version of it, right? And this is the bullish version, that same item. So there's actually one school of trading out there that effectively this is the only signal that they teach, okay? They spend their whole time. That's how strong it is. If somebody would ask me which pattern that you really, really needed to master with Japanese candlesticks, I would start with this one. Definitely for beginners, absolutely this is the strongest pattern you should be looking at, okay? Same kinds of questions as before, though. 
Is there a trend? Yes. Then you see the, the engulfing. That's a very strong signal that, that the reversal pattern has come. Okay. Let's look at an example here. Here we have uh, a downtrend. And we, by the way, the pictures here are from AlgoHedge, which is our tool that runs on Bloomberg. And the AlgoHedge tool has the candlestick. It identifies setups, which you can have a lot of different selections, but it has a, a whole array of Japanese candlesticks there. On the screen here, in addition to the candlesticks, you can see uh, a stochastics indicator below. It shows you uh, basically some people call them Bollinger Bands. So this is the time-weighted average price from the market profiles. This is first and second standard deviations up and down. These are all the, the tools that we use when, when we make a trade. So basically, on this setup here, the trend was down. Here you have a nice, strong, uh, bearish candle. Then you have the bullish candle for the engulfing, okay? We're going to track along and see what happened there. This is a bigger picture of it. One thing to notice here, I think, that's interesting. In the background, these shadow colors, the, the red, you know, color here and the green color here and the red here, uh, is a trend indicator, the proprietary trend indicator that we have. And notice the Japanese candlesticks are actually a leading indicator for the reversal of the trend. This shows a downtrend, but uh, the Japanese candlesticks are very often a leading indicator, which is a, obviously a strength. So the bullish engulfing pattern was here, and we got a nice run up. Okay, that was a daily, a daily pattern, by the way. Let's look at another one. So this is a bearish engulfing. The signal comes here. You, you've got a trend up. You get the engulfing pattern here. You can look at it in a bigger sense. And notice once again, this was still green. It also was, was a leading indicator in this case. We can also compare it to the stochastics indicator down below. So you can see that the stochastic also might have been a very, you know, an, another confirmation that this was going to be a good trade.